We don't often think about how the sense of touch makes our lives possible. We grip a paper coffee cup with perfect force to hold it but not crush it. Our feet always find the floor. But for people with artificial limbs or those with spinal injuries, the loss of touch can put the world beyond their grasp. 17 years ago, the Defense Department launched a $100 million project to revolutionize prosthetic limbs. The robotics you're about to see is amazing, but even more remarkable is how the feeling of feeling is returning to people like Brandon Prestwood. The story will continue in a moment. For me, it was, it's a battle if I wanted to live or die. You weren't sure you wanted to live? No. I didn't know if I wanted to or not. Brandon Prestwood's battle began with the loss of his left hand. In 2012, he was on a maintenance crew reassembling an industrial conveyor belt when someone turned it on. My arm was dragged in pretty much up to the shoulder. It crushed my bones in my arm and uh, fed my arm through a, a gap about one inch. How did they save your life? The other maintenance guys jumped in. They started basically taking the machine back apart. Uh, once we got it back apart, I could look in and see what was there. And uh, one of the gentlemen was a Vietnam veteran. And the Vietnam veteran knew what to do. Yeah. The Vietnam yeah. veteran knew tourniquets, but Prestwood lost his hand and couldn't return to his job. Go eat this. Yeah, that sounds good. After four years with a hook, he told his wife, Amy, he wanted to volunteer for experimental research involving surgery at the VA. I was not 100% on board to start with. But I knew he had his mind set that he, was, he had to do this, and I, I couldn't hold him back. Six years later, thanks to Defense Department and VA projects, Prestwood controls this hand with nothing but his thoughts. Everything still feel good? Probably when I get her turned around here. Electrodes implanted in muscles in his arm pick up his brain's electrical signals for movement. A computer translates those signals to the hand. How about the middle finger now? Sensors in the plastic fingers are connected to nerves in his arm to return a basic sense of touch. You close your eyes, tell me when you're feeling each of these. Which he can demonstrate with his eyes closed. Pinky. Index. That's not bad. Middle. Still requires a little bit, but it's not bad. Biomedical engineer Dustin Tyler leads this research at Case Western Reserve University and the Cleveland VA. Touch is about connection. It's connection to the world. It's about connection to others. And it's connection to yourself, right? I mean, we never experience not having touch. It's the largest sensory organ on our body. All right, so go ahead. Tyler first attempted an artificial connection in 2012 he switched it on in a volunteer and wondered what would happen. So I was concerned, would it be his whole hand? Would it be painful? Would it not feel anything? We had no idea. Uh, so one of those big moments in my career was he came in, we first turned on the stimulus and he kind of stopped for a second and he goes, that's my thumb. That's the tip of my thumb. This happened right away. First it time. didn't require any training of the brain. No, that was the beauty of it my thumb. Brandon Presswood remembers the instant it happened to him. That's my fingers. I'm feeling my fingers that I don't have anymore. I'm feeling them. A definite feeling, he told us, but different. It doesn't feel exactly like my right hand. It's a tingling sensation. It's not painful. It's kind of like if, you're, if your hand's been to sleep, right at the end, right before it wakes up, that very for me, it's pleasant. It's a pleasant tingling. Let's see if you can do it on cherry here. A tingling that's light with a light touch, but grows stronger the harder he presses, 
eyes closed. He can pinch a cherry firmly enough to pull it from its stem, but not crush it. You can feel this is light. I had to use my lightest touch. Right, so if I hold this right here. With an empty eggshell. I can feel it. I feel it in, I feel it here and here. It's a feeling more than a decade in the making. At the beginning of this research, how did you even imagine that this would be possible? I didn't imagine. I, thought, I imagined that it was not going to be possible. Sleeman Benzmeya at the University of Chicago is among the world's leading experts on the neuroscience of touch. In 2008, he joined the Defense Department's project to revolutionize prosthetics, but he didn't think the Pentagon knew what it was up against. There are 100 billion neurons in the brain interconnected with 100 trillion synapses. I mean, the, the, the human brain is like the most complex system in the known universe. Too complex, he believed, to target electrical stimulation to exactly the right neurons. And when we electrically stimulate, we activate hundreds, thousands of them at the same time in ways that would never happen naturally. It just seemed like that very impoverished interface with this nervous system would never do any, be able to do anything useful. And it turns out I was wrong. He was proved wrong by his own research. How you doing, Scott? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Scott. With volunteers including Scott Embry. And you can feel that. I feel it on my fingertips. Whose movement and sense of touch are limited by a spinal injury from a car accident. Computer ports in Embry's skull are wired to the motor and sensory parts of his brain. Electrodes pick up the brain's electrical signals that were intended for the muscles. A computer translates those signals to the robot arm. We first saw this brain-machine interface 10 years ago at the University of Pittsburgh, but back then there was no sensation. Index finger. In collaboration with Pitt, neuroscientist Sleeman Benzmeya showed that signals for touch could be returned to the brain. How can you possibly know what part of the brain is the tip of the index finger? We took Scott and we put him in a functional magnetic resonance imaging scanner. And then we had him imagine moving his thumb, imagine moving his index, imagine moving his, his digits as we monitored his brain activity. And lo and behold, the sensory and motor parts of the brain that are involved in the hand lit up. Middle, ring, index. There are challenges. Brain. Eventually, the brain builds scar tissue at the implants, limiting the motor electrodes. But one patient's implants have lasted seven years and counting. Scott Embry's have been working more than two years. You have been a subject of this work for years now. Yes, sir. And I wonder why. I wanted to have someone else have the opportunity to become independent again. The most meaningful work of your life. Yes, sir. 100%. The greatest independence might be no prosthetic at all. And we saw this astounding possibility with a pioneer, Austin Began. His brain impulses are rooted not to a robot, but to implants in his own arm that fire his muscles. What function did you have in this hand before the implants? Oh, absolutely not. Nothing? Yeah. You couldn't move it at all? Nah, so the only thing I can do really is shrug my shoulders and kind of shift them. Uh, unfortunately, that was all that came back after my accident. His accident was on a vacation celebrating his college graduation. Diving into a submerged sandbar left him quadriplegic. Now, motor and sensory impulses flow through the ports in Began's skull and a computer, bypassing okay. his damaged spine. Relax, close. The research is led by Bolu Ajiboye, a biomedical engineer at Case Western Reserve University. Our goal is to restore complete functionality of the upper arm, including dexterous hand function and the ability to reach out. 
so that Austin and others who have suffered you know, severe spinal cord injury can regain some level of functional independence. Bring my arm forward. The cradle under his arm only supports the weight. All of the motion is his own. It takes effort. He has to concentrate. A little bit quicker, open hand, relax hand, close hand, relax hand, open hand, relax hand. And the computer needs frequent adjustment. How'd that feel? Good. Good. But his yeah. parents, Shelly and Brad, showed us where this could lead. Carrot, or would you like to have a nice granola bar? I'll take the granola yeah, bar. I figured. Began retained limited feeling after his injury, which makes him ideal for evaluating the artificial sense of touch. Point your finger. So if I can extend first. His motor skills. Let me open my hand for you. Continue to grow. And squeeze around it. You'll feel me really start to dig in right there. You got a grip. Yeah, it really is some let go. <laughs> yeah, and I'll bring the arm back up. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Thank Amazing. you so much. Amazing advances are coming quickly. Danny Werner okay. lost his foot in Vietnam. It's on. Okay. But 47 years later, he was reconnected to toe. touch in an toe. artificial foot. And you feel that on your toes? Yep. Which helps him balance, climb stairs, and walk on uneven ground. Brandon Prestwood's next device will replace some wiring with Bluetooth connections. Especially the thumb. Thumb's spot on. The cost of his experimental rig and surgery is estimated at roughly $200,000. But an eventual commercial system may cost significantly less while delivering moments that are priceless. What did that mean to you, to feel Amy's <laughs> hand in yours? The world. I was a whole person again. I didn't have to worry about those dark thoughts creeping back in. It's just giving me back my husband, who <laughs> means the world to me. Um, he's his self again. Himself, because the feeling of feeling is so much of what makes us human. Maybe that's why, when we see a tender moment, it is said to be touching. I love you. <laughs> <laughs>